The 2018 Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series. Brought to you from the studios of Georgia Public Broadcasting. The Republican race for Secretary of State. Hello and welcome to the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young Debate Series, originating from the studios of Georgia Public Broadcasting in Atlanta. I'm Dennis O'Hare, the local host of Morning Edition on 90.1 WABE, and this is the debate among the Republican candidates for Secretary of State. So let's meet them, and they are, in alphabetical order, Buzz Brockway, who's a state representative for the 102nd District in Gwinnett County, which covers parts of Lawrenceville and Suwannee. David Belisle is a former mayor of Alpharetta, who runs a small business as a real estate attorney and formerly practiced corporate and real estate law. Josh McCoon is a small business owner and attorney with a background in election law. He's also a state senator from Columbus. And Brad Raffensperger is CEO and owner of Tendon Systems LLC, which is a specialty contracting and engineering design firm, and he is also a state representative from Johns Creek. So let's meet our panelists. Giovanna Derpik is a political reporter with CBS 46, and Maggie Lee is a freelance reporter covering state politics in Georgia. Now let's get started. And if you want to know the rules for today's debate, you can find them on the Atlanta Press Club website, atlantapressclub.org. To start the debate, each candidate will be asked one question by one of our panelists. And Maggie Lee, you get the first question to Buzz Brockway. Um, sure, Representative Brockway. I wanted to talk about uh, one of the most um one of the most talked about election bills this year in the legislature was Senate Bill 363 that proposed um, allowing counties uh, to choose one Saturday or one Sunday, but not both for, for, for early voting. Gwinnett County itself was against that. They have long voting lines. They wanted to have more voting days. You carried that bill in, in the House. What's, what's your response to critics of that bill? Well, um, actually, as I, I was asked by Senator Brass, who was the Senate author of the bill, to present that bill in the, in the Senate, and as you, in the House, excuse me. And as you know, it never came up for a vote. Uh, and honestly, uh, the reason it didn't really come up for a vote is because I had done some research. I contacted uh, National Council of State Legislators and found that uh, five states have tried to do what Georgia is doing, and that's in enforce uniform uh, uh, voting times across the state, and four of them had lost in federal court. So uh, I suggested to uh, the, the powers that be that we not bring that bill out on the floor. And I think, you know, on the, on the surface level, it sounds great, and I, I – uh, I, I don't really understand all the legal reasons why we would not want to do that because I think every voter ought to have the same access to to the polls in the same amount of time. But uh, unfortunately, federal courts have decided that uh, different areas can have different length of time voting. So uh, it was kind of an ongoing process as to what to do with that bill. And in the end, we decided it was best not to not to bring it forward. Thank you, Mr. Brockway. Giovanna Derpik, you now, may now ask a question of Mr. Uh, let's see, Mr. Raffensperger. State Representative Raffensperger, welcome. You have a campaign ad on TV which says that you will, quote, target dangerous criminals. Some may say this sounds like you could be running for a district attorney position, not secretary of state. Who are you referring to specifically as, quote, unquote, dangerous in the election world? And how will you target them? Well, the secretary of state's office is in charge of corporations. And I think that people that are hiding behind their corporation to, uh, engage in illegal activities like prostitution and sex trafficking, those corporations need to be shut down. When I was on city council, we put together a model ordinance to run out illicit massage parlors in our city. What I did is I pulled together another council member, our city attorney, and working together, we created over a year a model ordinance. I believe that I'll use the full constitutional power of the office to make sure that corporations are operating legally here in Georgia and not engaging in illegal activities. Thank you. Thank you. And now we go to Maggie Lee for a question for David Belisle. Sure. Mr. Bell, Mr. Belisle, um, in, in an op-ed you've written that, that's on your website, you've said that the front door for election fraud is, is wide open in Georgia because of absentee ballots, which can be cast without a photo ID. But can you talk specifically about how big of a problem you think this is and, and how, you, how you come to that conclusion? What are some of the uh, data sources or, or stories you're looking at? 
Maggie, thank you for the question. And, uh, you know, I, I compare it to a, a bottle of water. Uh, if you have a hole in the bottle of water, you don't ask yourself how many ounces or grams are in that bottle of water to know that you need to stop the leak. And when it comes to voting and voter fraud, the biggest opportunity for voter fraud is the absentee ballot. We all know that when you go to vote, either on election day or in early voting, you show your photo ID, and we're proud of that in the state of Georgia, and we should be. But right now, when it comes to the absentee ballot, you don't need a photo ID, you don't need a witness, you don't need a notary or even an excuse. All you need is somebody's address and somebody's stamp, and that needs to stop. So I will make that a priority to bring a photo ID requirement to the absentee ballot. Thank you, Mr. Bell Isle. Giovanna Derpik gets the final question to Josh McCoon. State Senator Josh McCoon, welcome. Uh, on your campaign website, you say that you will stand strong for quote unquote all citizens, but then you go on to say that you'll put a quote, an end to the liberal attack on the sanctity of our ballot box. How can people believe that you're going to be inclusive and will not allow political manipulation or influence to uh, guide your decisions, especially when you've been such a vocal proponent of religious liberty legislation? Well, I think what's important in the Secretary of State's office is to safeguard the integrity of our electoral process. I don't really care if you're on the left or the right. We've got to have confidence in the outcome of our elections. Uh, you know, there are folks on the left that have argued there's been interference with our electoral process as recently as the last presidential election. There are folks on the right that have criticisms of our electoral process as well. And as an attorney with a background in election law, I feel I'm uniquely qualified to solve the problems around securing the integrity of our elections process so that everyone can have confidence in the results of those elections. Because that's fundamentally what our state government or our federal government rest upon is, a, is that the public is confident that their votes are being accurately cast and counted and that the will of the people through the electoral process is being expressed. And that's what I intend to do as the next Secretary of State. But you specifically call out liberal attacks. Yes, I think there are definitely people who are trying to make it easier to cheat within our process, uh, whether it's people that are pushing for same-day registration, which makes it a nightmare for local elections officials to safely administer an election, uh, whether it's our current absentee ballot process, which desperately needs to be revised. Uh, there are several issues. The voting machines that we're using that people have serious concerns about. All of those issues need to be addressed so that everyone can have confidence in the result of our elections. Thank you, and we'll pick up on that system in just a moment. But for those of us just joining us, this is the debate between the Republican candidates for Secretary of State. And we'll now go back to the panel to ask questions of the candidate. Uh, I believe that's, um, that's different different section here. Sorry about this. The candidates will now ask a question of an opponent of his choice. Each candidate will have 30 seconds to ask the question, 60 seconds to respond, and 30 seconds for a rebuttal. And by random selection, Josh McCoon, you have the first question to one of your opponents. Thank you. My question is for Representative Brockway. Uh, Representative, as you know, we have a very large military population in our state, uh, both active, retired, and their families. As Secretary of State, what would you do in that office to make Georgia a more friendly state for active and retired military and their families? Yeah, great question. Thank you, Senator, for the question. I think there's a number of things we can do. Uh, uh, there's a lot of federal law that uh, that deals with this, so obviously we need to enforce that. But I think most importantly, uh, we can uh, offer uh, um, overseas and military voters the opportunity to vote by preferential voting. And that would allow them to express their choices at one time. They can rank the candidates that they like best. And then that would ensure that uh, that all their uh, preferences are, are uh, included in, in the elections process. And it would allow us here in Georgia to shorten our runoff time and, and have this uh, not have this painful two month runoff that we have currently in Georgia. So I think that those are things we can do. Uh, we can also uh, uh, be very proactive and make sure that we're reaching out to all our military personnel who are overseas as well as other Georgians who are, are, are abroad and uh, be more proactive in reaching out to them and keeping them informed of the elections process as we as we move forward. There's some other states who do things like that, uh, text messaging, emails and things like that to help keep voters, uh, military and overseas voters informed. Thank you for the question. Senator, you have 30 seconds if you want. Thank you. I certainly agree with Representative Brockway about how imperative it is 
uh, that we make sure our military uh, is able to vote and able to have their vote counted. What I would add to that is that it is essential that we deal with the issue of licensing for both people exiting the military with relevant training for a licensed profession, as well as spouses who are licensed in other states and moving to our state. That's going to be a key issue moving forward. If I'm your next Secretary of State, we're going to work very hard to make sure those military families are accommodated. Thank you, Senator. David Bellisle, you get the next question to one of your opponents. I have a question for Senator McCoon. Uh, the Secretary of State's office has a budget of $36 million. They have an employee staff level of between 230 and 260, depending on the time of year. Have you ever been directly responsible for a budget of even a quarter of that size or directly responsible for an organization with paid employees of even a quarter of that size? As a member of the legislature, uh, obviously, uh, we consider on an annual basis the state's budget last year over $25 billion. And obviously, within state government, you have huge organizations that receive oversight from the legislature. And so I've been part of that during my time in office. I do think that as a member of the legislature, one of the things I understand is that if we're going to address the funding issues within the Secretary of State's office, we need to make sure that the licensing fees that people are paying to the Secretary of State actually stay in the office so that the uh, the services that should be rendered to licensed professions are able to be rendered. Right now, the nursing board alone is experiencing a 400-day wait time on investigations being resolved. And that's a problem that can only be solved if we put more people onto that process. And we can do that by amending the state constitution to dedicate those funds. That's the kind of leadership I will bring as your next Secretary of State. Mr. Bellisle, you have 30 seconds to rebut if you want. Absolutely. The issues facing the office of the Secretary of State, the issues facing the state of Georgia are too important for on-the-job training. There are three legislators up here, there's one mayor, and I'm the only one that has actually led a multidisciplined organization, the only one who has managed a budget of over $60 million. Uh, that is important. As we look and as we make that decision, we need someone who's not just someone of an opinion. We need someone who has the experience to lead and I'm that leader. Thank you, Mr. Bellisle. The next question to one of your opponents comes from Brad Raffensperger. Mr. Bellisle, as an attorney, I am sure you are familiar with K Georgia law. The state's ethics commission ruled that candidates for secretary of state cannot accept contributions from licensed regulated entities. Your financial disclosure shows you took $25,000 of illegal campaign contributions from real estate developers and contractors who are licensed entities. Why did you take these contributions? Uh, it's my opinion that those contributions are legal and we've uh, abided by all ethics laws. Is that that's the extent of your answer? Mr. Raffensperger, you have 30 seconds to rebut if you want. Well, there's an opinion from former Attorney General that goes back to 1998. I uh, suggest that our attorney uh, on the stage with us today would go ahead and research that. And when you find that they are illegal, will you commit to returning those funds immediately? You only get to ask one question, so um, you can answer that or not, Mr. Bell Isle, if you want. I'll decline. All right, thank you. Buzz Brockway has the final question to one of your opponents. Well, I'll ask this to uh, my colleague in the House, Representative Raffensperger, since he hasn't gotten a question yet. But my question really is this uh, if, if you could take a moment and explain how you became a, uh, a, a conservative Republican. What was the thought process behind that? What events in your life led you to uh, become a uh, member of the Republican Party? I probably, thank you for your question. I, I've probably been a conservative all my life. I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit, working part-time, uh, finding how I can make money as a teenager. And then actually my dad got transferred to Toronto, Ontario, Canada when I was 10 years old and we grew up in a very liberal place and I just realized I didn't share that worldview. I just believed in opportunity, hard work, and that's why we moved back as soon as I graduated from university with my Canadian wife, Trisha, and she's now an American, but wanted to uh, engage in the American, you know, free market system. So our first business was a daycare center in Lilburn, Georgia, and uh, we built that up to 174 kids. Then went out my own and uh, with a partner, actually, and, and now I'm out my own, but we built our business up to about 200 employees, and we do over $35 million a year. So I actually run a complex organization today, so I don't need any on-the-job training for Secretary of State. And I just believe in America, and I believe in the free market system. Thank you for your question. Mr. Brockway, uh, uh, 30 seconds. Thank you for the answer, Representative. And I, I just 
as I've gone throughout this campaign, my respect for these three gentlemen has grown. I've, uh, we're one of the few races, maybe until today, uh, that has had a, a very vigorous debate on the important issues, and I res my respect for these gentlemen has grown. Uh, I, too, have been a lifelong conservative. I've, I first started uh, learning about conservative politics when I was a teenager when my uncle gave me a subscription to National Review magazine. So kind of a nerdy guy, and I sat around reading National Review as a teenager and watching Firing Line. So thank you. Thanks very much. And if you are just joining us, this is the debate among the Republican candidates for Secretary of State. Now, we'll now go back to the panel to ask questions to the candidate of her choice until we run out of time. And as a point of moderator privilege, I may also ask questions of the candidates. I'll also determine when an abut a rebuttal is appropriate. And I'm going to take that privilege right now and ask a basic question of all four of you. We'll go in reverse order from what we did just now with the questions among you. Buzz Brockway, first to you, but this is addressed to you all. Of course, there's a state commission now looking into the system we use currently for verifying votes, for counting votes, and for casting votes. How would you change that to specifically to what type of system would you go? And secondly, how would you get it funded? Yeah, great question. Uh, what we would do, what I would like to see Georgia do, is what 70% of the country does, and that is uh, folks who need assistance use a, a touchscreen machine uh, that then would produce a ballot uh, that they could look at and confirm and then insert into a scanner. But most voters vote on a paper ballot where they hand mark it and then feed it into a scanner. So that's the system I think that's most cost effective and what we need to do here in Georgia. The second thing we need to do is we need to have post election audits where we pull those ra uh, random samples of those ballots and then we we uh, check them to make sure that the results that we see on paper match the reported results that the electronic uh, system produces and that the scanner counts. And I think we, if we do that, we can restore trust in elections. How we get it funded? Uh, first of all, we'd need to, uh, the legislature is going to have to fund this. And I think this year we had uh, some bills uh, that would, uh, that have drawn uh, very much attention to this. I think most of the legislature on both sides, on both houses, understands how crucially important this is. So I think we can get it funded. Mr. Raffensperger, same question to you. This last session, we had three bills for updating the voting machines. Those machines were put into service in 2002, and they need to be upgraded. When you think that the iPhone's only been around for 10 years and how many upgrades it's had. In the city of Conyers, they used a new voting technology. I'm not saying that's the one we would use, but it had a system that looked electronic on the front end, and you could pick your selections, and then you press the button. It was not to cast your ballot. It was to print the ballot. You then could print the ballot, look at it, and then you went to an optical scanner and ran it through the opti optical scanner. As an engineer and the only engineer in this race, I'm going to be looking at a system that really increases process flow. Because you talked about earlier as a question about lines. And if we can have a system that's more efficient and move people more quickly through, that would be tremendous. Also, it would allow assist the new system that they used in Conyers would, would be much quicker for early votes and would count them a lot quicker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Raffensperger. David Belisle. Right now, when we vote uh, and we push that cast ballot button, we, by faith, believe that our vote will be counted just the way we made it. Um, I think that's a mistake. And so I do think we need to move to a new system. The system I support is, is one similar to what's been talked about, but essentially where after showing your photo ID, you'd be given essentially a piece of card stock or paper. You would submit it into the voting machine. You'd vote electronically just like you do now. But when you hit cast ballot, it would print out. And without the use of any barcode, it would just allow the voter to visually verify that their vote is just as they made it. You would then put that into a second machine, which would scan that as of the day of the election and make a second electronic copy and also store that physical copy. And then what I would do is I would so store the, each of those two electronic copies on two separate closed circuit databases uh, and then also keep the paper uh, copies so that we could have post-election audits. In terms of funding, absolutely, we've got to go to the state legislature. It's a hat in hand position, but that's why you need someone who knows how to lead beyond their organization. Thank you. And Senator McComb, it's your turn. I think there are three guidestones here that you have to follow. One is it's got to be an open and competitively bid process. We're talking about millions of dollars of taxpayer money. Uh, it's got to be a process that is heavily engaged with the local elections officials because they're the ones that ultimately run this process and will be educating the public. 
But we need a system that incorporates both a touchscreen element to prevent overvoting and undervoting, people missing a race or people voting for multiple people in a race. It really solves that problem. But having the paper ballot that can be read and verified by a voter is also essential. It's essential for their confidence in the process, but frankly, it's essential for a recount. You know, when we had the uh, Atlanta mayor's race last December, you couldn't really get a true recount. You just ran these machines a second time. If you have a paper backup, you can get a true recount for those close elections. That's what will increase confidence in the process, the touchscreen interface with a paper ballot at the end of the process. Thank you very much. And now our panel of journalists will direct questions to the candidates. Maggie Lee, you get the first one. Uh, sure. I'll ask a question to Representative Brockway. Um, this, this office, Secretary of State, a lot of it is frankly administrative, being the state's top election officer, administering licenses. Um, there's a lot of it is not necessarily, um, doesn't necessarily involve policy decisions with, with a partisan lean. Um, but what's the role of partisan leanings in an office that's so administrative? Mm -hmm. How do you reassure folks on the other side of the aisle about the integrity of the voting process when, you know, in, in this office you're you're a person with an R after their name. Yeah, it, it's, it's a great question, and, and it's crucially important, I believe, uh, that uh, the Secretary of State be a person you can trust. Uh, you mentioned that it's sort of a bureaucratic job, and I'm, I'm kind of a nerdy guy, uh, so I think that uh, I'm, I went to Georgia Tech. That kind of you know stamps my nerdy credentials, but I think that's the you need somebody who's focused on the job, not somebody who is looking to the future and saying, oh, I'm going to sit here for a couple years until another office opens up that I really want to run for. You need somebody who cares very much about this job. And trust is so important in politics. This week I announced uh, that I've got support of 70 of my house, uh, house colleagues. Uh, uh, this, they, they're, help, they're letting people know that they trust me and that they, they have worked with me, uh, that I can, I'm a person who can get the job done. You're right, this shouldn't really be an excessively partisan job. Uh, you're going to have to have the trust of people on the other side of the aisle or else you're going to have a rough ride as Secretary of State. You're going to find yourself in court. You're going to find yourself in the newspaper all the time uh, in, in controversy. So I'll avoid that. Thanks very much. Giovanna Derpik has the next question. Former Mayor Bell Isle. Have you ever attended a state elections board meeting? And if so, what was your takeaway? I have not. Did you have? So as far as on the job training for people who feel that it's important that somebody is familiar with what the state elections board system does, how would you reassure them? Well, I think there's more to the job than, than the state board of elections meeting. That's certainly a big part of it. Um, but there's a lot going on, professional licensing, uh, securities, corporations, elections. And also there's a leadership side to this. And that oftentimes when we get in these debates, everything gets framed around those direct responsibilities. But I'll point out that what a mayor knows is it's not just public safety, engineering, public works, roads when they're running the city. You also have to chart the course. And that's the experience that I'll bring to the Secretary of State's office. Thank you. Maggie Lee has the next question. Sure. A, a question for a question for Senator McCoon. Um, as Secretary of State, how would you see yourself working with the federal government, with the Department of Homeland Security, or with um, you know any future uh, with the current administration or any any future administration? How how do you feel about cooperation with the federal government on on elections? Well, I think it's imperative to work with federal agencies. Uh, but it's also imperative to work with our Congress and with our president where we think that there are federal policies that need to be changed. Uh, you know, Gwinnett County alone is spending over three quarters of a million dollars a year uh, printing their ballots in different languages and offering translators at the polls. Uh, part of the reason for that has to do with a federal law that, in my opinion, is a massive unfunded mandate on this state and on county and local governments. And so it would certainly be my intention as Secretary of State to reach out to the Trump administration, to reach out to uh, members of Congress who agree uh, that we need to end that kind of massive uh, unfunded mandate uh, on Georgians, on local governments in Georgia, and on the administration of elections in our state. Right, and we are very short of time here. Time for one more question. I'm going to ask it of Mr. Raffensperger because you haven't had one in this round. There was controversy when the commission that President Trump put together on voter fraud asked states, including Georgia, for voter data. Is uh, Obviously, that particular commission has not gone very far. 
But in the future, what kinds of data would you feel comfortable turning over to any administration should they ask for it? I understand why they ask for that information, but historically, elections have been done at the state level. And I think that our private confidential voter information needs to stay within the Secretary of State's office. The Social Security numbers that are in the database now are, are, are encrypted and only show the last four numbers. I would not release all the information. In this day of hacking, I'm just worried and concerned that you could have identity theft or hacking or other issues. I do want to cooperate, but I also want to make sure that Georgia is a state and is in charge of its own elections, just like all the other states are. So I would not release uh, information like everyone's Social Security numbers. That's just, I think, too dangerous at this present day and time. All right. Thank you. And that's all the time we have for questions. Each candidate now has 60 seconds for a closing statement. And we start with Josh McCoon. Well, thank you so much to the Atlanta Press Club and to Georgia Public Broadcasting for this opportunity to discuss the important issues around this race. My name is Josh McCoon. I want to be your next Secretary of State. I think the next Secretary of State needs to be an attorney with an election law background who understands how elections administration works and can walk into the job on day one and do the job. I think that that's why Insurance Commissioner Ralph Hudgens, Public Service Commissioner Tim Eccles, and 22 members of the Georgia State Senate uh, and my good friend, former President Pro Tem Eric Johnson from Savannah, have endorsed my candidacy for Secretary of State. They understand how important this job is. Frankly, they understand how competitive the general election for this job is going to be. Obviously, we're here today talking about the Republican primary. You want the Republican nominee to be someone who can win in November, who has a true statewide organization. I check all those boxes. I'm ready for the job. I'm ready to win in November. And I'm going to honor the commitments I make to you today and as this campaign goes forward. Josh McCoon to be your next Secretary of State. And now it's uh, Representative Raffensperger's turn. I believe we need a nominee who's already proven that they can run an organization with a $30 million budget, and I do that daily with my company. Also an organization such as the Secretary of State's office with over 200 employees, and my company right now has over 150. So I won't need on the job, job training on how to run a corporation of that size. I'm the only candidate on the stage that has 100% rating from the Faith and Freedom Coalition of Georgia. I'll stand strong on elections, and I'll use the power within the limits of the Constitution to make sure that people that are using corporations to uh, push sex trafficking and drugs in Georgia will use the full power to shut them down. I'm Brad Raffensperger. I'm asking for your vote on May 22nd. Thank you. Thank you. Buzz Brockway, it's your turn. Well, thank you to the Atlanta Press Club for hosting this debate and for the panelists for the great questions and for, uh, for you, Dennis, for moderating this. And... You know, this is an incredibly important office. This is a very, very important position that often doesn't get the attention that it might deserve, but it touches so many lives in the state of Georgia. And I believe that you need a Secretary of State who cares about this job, not one who is looking to the future and is going to sit on their hands and wait for some other office to open up, but somebody who's going to roll their sleeves up and, and, and think about how can we make lines on Election Day shorter? How can we process business licenses, uh, uh, professional licenses faster? And I'm that candidate. Let's Listen, uh, what we needed to do in the, in the Republican Party is have a candidate and a nominee who can unite the Republican Party. I can do that. That's how the Republicans will win in November is with a united Republican Party. I'm asking for your vote for Secretary of State. Um, you can find my uh, website at VoteForBuzz.com. I'm on Instagram and, and Twitter at Buzz Brockway, and I'm on Facebook at Vote for Buzz. And I ask for your vote in the May 22nd primary. Thank you. Thank you. David Bell Isle has the last closing statement. Well, also I want to extend my thanks and my gratitude to both the Atlanta Press Club and the panel. We have been campaigning for a year, and everything that we've been talking about, everything that we've been campaigning on falls on two objectives. And those objectives are to defeat voter fraud and champion Georgia jobs. On May 22nd, you're going to have four choices. You're going to have three legislators, and you're going to have a mayor. But I'm the only one who will be ready on day one to run a multidisciplined organization. The only one who will be ready on day one to lead leaders, to accomplish goals, not just within the organization, but beyond the organization, because I have. And the only one who will be ready to lead and grow an industry, because I have. As Alpharetta's mayor, we grew Alpharetta to over 640 technology companies and over 100,000 jobs. We can do that for Georgia. Records matter, leadership matters, David Bell Isle, I would love to earn your vote on May 22nd. 
Thank you very much. And that concludes our debate. Now, we'd like to remind voters that the primary elections will be held on Tuesday, May 22nd, and early voting is already going on. Our thanks to the candidates and to our panel of journalists. And we'd also like to thank the Atlanta Press Club for arranging today's debate. You can find more information about the Atlanta Press Club and all of the debates they're going to host this primary election season by visiting atlantapressclub.org. This debate will be archived there and on Georgia Public Broadcasting's website, gpb.org. Stay tuned now for the Republican primary debate for state school superintendent. I'm Dennis O'Hare. Thank you so much for joining us for the Atlanta Press Club Loudermilk Young debate series.